Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss how to add a text to a curve on a 3D model. And I'm going to share a few of my tips and tricks with you. First thing I'd like you to notice is the modeling resolution, how there's only three. I'm going to show you a little trick. So what you do is you hold shift before you open the file, like right now, hold shift. And now you will have an extra two settings for the modeling resolution. Basically what that does is gives you a higher resolution during your preview. Now I'm entering in my job setup information. For this tutorial, we're going to use the second from the bottom on the modeling resolution. Since we're doing a 3D model, we're going to go to the modeling tab and pick the file. The model that I'm using was purchased from Make and Design. I'll leave the link in the description. And this is their website. Now you're going to search the word B to find the model. And there it is. It comes in three styles, A, B, and C. For this tutorial, we're using style B. It's in a dish. Simply just put it in your cart. I've already purchased it so that it's not available there. If you'd like to buy all three, it's 45 bucks. You do that at the bottom right there. The program is from Vetric. This is the latest version, 10.509. There's the price. You can download a free trial. However, you cannot generate the G code to actually send it to your machine. You can play around with the program, but you can't send it. So let's get started. First off, we're going to center the workpiece. Tap the alignment key, use the middle button. Now we need to resize it. Grab that tab and drag. Now notice how it did not stay in the center. We have a trick for that. So now you're going to hold the shift key, grab that tab and pull and it will stay in the middle of the workpiece. Now we need to put a vector around our 3D model. So we're going to go to that icon, you could add numbers, we're just going to drag Get a good size going, recenter it, and now we need to make it to the edge of the model. If you tap it again, it'll bring up the tabs for you to move. Then you just stretch it into place. It doesn't have to be perfect, but get as close as you can. After you've got it sized, we need to go to no editing mode. Tap the N key on the keyboard. After you tap the N, 
this will happen. Now we're going to go right there. You're going to left click and then right click and then cut vector. Go to the exact opposite side, do the same thing. Left click, right click, cut vector. Tap the end key on the keyboard, get out of no editing. Now we need to delete this span. Go up there, hit the scissors. Now we're gonna use the other part to text on a curve. But first we need to offset it about a quarter inch. You're gonna do the inward because it's only a half a circle, it's opposite. It will go out still. Select all three. Notice how it went out. We're about a quarter inch away from our model. That's what we want. So now we need to add text. Hit that icon. Put your text in that box. And pick your font. If you use the up and down arrows when it's highlighted, you can actually see a change while you're look while you're tapping it. Now it's time to add our text to the curve. With the text highlighted, hold shift, select the top vector. Now hit that button. It's okay. And now you make your adjustments as needed in this box. You can play around with the settings over there to get your best view. If you need to separate the text if they're too close or overlapping, you can do that too. The text spacing button. Alright, let's go off topic for a minute. Did you know that a honeybee hive has around 20,000 to 50,000 bees in a hive? And the queen bee lays around 1,000 to 2,500 eggs per day. Okay, back to the lesson. Right there, I'm pretty much checking to see if it's in the center, and it looks good to me. Now we need to erase that line. We don't need it anymore. Use the scissors. So at this point, we need to size our model. For this tutorial, we're going to put it at 0.45. Always remember the thickness of your board that you're using. You, you want to have at least a quarter inch between that model. Now we're going to run two different tool paths. I'm going to show you a trick on how I decide what size tool I'm going to use. So the first thing you're going to do is get the bigger tool create a tool path. We're going to use a quarter inch ball nose from a mana tool. There's the number up there. So for this model, you do not need to do a roughing pass. While that's generating G code, this is a good opportunity to thank everybody for watching my video. Please like subscribe to my channel and share this video. Now it's time to generate the smaller bit G-code. 
I will be uploading more content from VCarve Pro. So please subscribe so you don't miss out. Keep in mind the bigger bit needs to be first, the smaller bit second. Okay, now we have one of the G-Codes generated for the quarter inch. Now we need to do the smaller bit. So here's the part in the beginning where I showed you the modeling, modeling resolution, the extras. This is where it takes longer to generate. However, you will get a better picture if you use higher resolution to see what your outcome is going to be. Now that we have both G codes generated, now it's time to reset the model and select only the top quarter inch. Now select only the smaller bit, do not reset. If you notice it's 34 minutes for the first bigger one and 2 hours and 18 minutes for the smaller one. If you're trying to run a business, you gotta be efficient. So you have to make the right choice. You don't want to put out junk, but you don't want to take all day to make it. So that's how I use that part to determine what bit I'm going to use based on the factors of how long it takes and what it looks like. Keep in mind, some models you can get away with using a quarter inch. Other models, it's not going to work. So. If you use that process right there, it's pretty easy to figure out which one you need. If you're not using a quarter inch, just make sure the bigger bit is first. So now we need to generate the code for the V-carve lettering. I'm going to use a 90 degree bit. So one thing I like about it is you can infill color. That works great when you're trying to show a customer what it's going to look like, different colors you can use. I like that feature. Notice how fast V-carving is compared to 3D modeling. If you'd like to go to my website and see how that turned out, the link will be in the description as I sell this on my website. And that about wraps it up. That's my techniques for texting on a curve on a 3D model and how I do bit selection for the 3D model. I'd like to thank everybody for joining in. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it on all social media. Thanks for watching.